John, uh, welcome to the show. I uh, I think we just got to start off with um, what is your favorite type of coffee? Both the actual coffee bean and the methodology of which you like to brew it. So that, that's your random p- podcast starting question. Oh, man, I love that. It's actually probably the coffee I'm... I'm might be sipping on <laughs> you test it you're like mm. uh right now yeah <laughs> no uh it's a great question um and we've kind of just met yeah. and for you to ask that question you're like reaching into my history yeah. book i i love coffee like coffee is a huge passion of mine um and actually can't wait for the day that i can open up my own coffee shop hell yeah um but i i my first job was a barista and my last job was a barista. Wow. Um, cause if we call being a photographer a job, um, then I guess it's not my last job, <laughs> but, um, it's, uh, it's always been a passion of mine. And so one of my favorite roasters on the planet is Olympia coffee roasters. I was fortunate enough to, to serve them. Um, when I was getting into the grind, um, no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I was so like, in love with everything that they did and there was a coffee back in the day that they had it was an ethiopian and it was from worka and every time you open the bag it was like a blueberry pie (laughs) and it was unbelievable like it would take over the entirety of your space like that's how pungent it was Mm. after opening the bag and i just fell in love with that coffee i love that coffee um uh and it's so fun to brew it i do it on kalita um back in the day it's when they had it um when it, it's a seasonal thing so obviously it's coffee so it's uh but it was a beautiful moment uh when i first um discovered that coffee loved it but coffee to me has even more of a, a deeper sense i've gone over to origin and had the chance to go to uh, a couple of coffee farms both in rwanda and also in kenya mm. and I fell in love. One of my favorite experiences in, in coffee was actually being in Rwanda, being on a farm that partners with the organization of why I was there. I was documenting for them and I got the chance to watch the whole process yeah. from farmers farming to plucking the cherries, to walking them to the washing station, washing the coffee, um, and then doing everything else that they do, drying it, all the, like literally every process um, and then getting the chance to actually sip the coffee on the farm, um, was a really, really cool experience. Totally. Um, and so like, I, there, there's a lot of those kind of moments for me, um, in terms of the coffee world. So I, I could literally chat your ear on about <laughs> it and then you're going to be like, Hey, we're here to talk about photography. <laughs> we can talk about um, that. so, uh, yeah, I love coffee. Uh, so that would probably be, um, a couple of just quick answers to that. But then also I, I do Kalita a ton. Okay. Um, it's That's your brew method, a really right? easy process. Yeah. yeah. So it's like this little aluminum tin thing that you put a flat bottom filter in. It's super thin. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it alleviates a lot of paper taste, but it's um, also allows more oxygen to come up as you brew because there's three holes. Yeah. Um, and so it's pretty amazing. I love it. I love that. I love the, uh, I have a bunch of friends who are into coffee and work at coffee shops and they're like, you know, the Starbucks master barista and all that stuff. And, um, I'm like a coffee noob, but I, I appreciate it. And then like hearing the weird niche, uh, methodologies, you know, right. Like, uh, if we, if we assume either Starbucks or drip at home is everybody's standard, uh, if they drink coffee at all. Uh, and then go from there. It's like they hear about a Kalita and they're like, what witchcraft is this? They're like, you're, if, if somebody yeah, said yeah. that John is a flat earther and drinks Kalita coffee, they wouldn't know which thing is weirder. <laughs> you know, they'd be like that Kalita though. You know, so yeah. for like anyone that's going to watch this that knows coffee well, they're going to be like, oh yeah, Kalita, yeah. like it's amazing. Yeah. Um, but there's also a million ways to do every method. So that's mm. the thing is so many people have discovered wow so many ways to do each thing and that's all predicated off ratios yeah so it's um your coffee to water ratio is an important thing yeah um so i I always tell people there's two really important things that you need to get when you have coffee at your home is that you need a good grinder because that helps your entire process and then also having a scale because if you can't measure yeah your coffee to water ratio it's tough um and so yeah guessing game and coffee is is um, is unique business. 
And so if you have a scale, it's a game changer. I love it. I love so. it. Welcome to the Bearded Talk, yeah. John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can we just ask Brandis? When we, uh, we had Ben John uh, probably early on in the podcast, I want to say like in the, he's in the episode 40s or 50s maybe. And, uh, and I asked him, I'm a Patriots fan. And so I asked him, I, I just asked him about the Seahawks to start off with. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this is what I like. I like to break the ice early. You know, we only have an hour together and I'm like, all right, I've never met this guy. I've dove into some some research. I was like, let's let's see where it. And I was like, coffee's it. Um, so yeah, give me a little bit about your your background and kind of fill in the gaps for everybody. You know, um, you're one of those photographers where I think uh, I've talked to a few other people where you know you hear business advice, you hear podcasts, you hear the photographers, and they say, hey, you should niche down and you should like, you know, if you said I shoot weddings, you should only put weddings on your social right and and i always talk to people i'm like that's what i tell people sometimes i'm just like hey it might be easier to try and get bookings um but you seem to be pretty successful uh shooting all kinds of stuff you know uh from couples to commercial to whatever um uh, and you do that now but what's uh what was your photography journey to to get to this point and i know you had some uh some instagram crazy magic along the way met your wife somehow through a BuzzFeed article or something, uh, you know, all <laughs> kinds of stuff. So yeah, I've, I've done a little bit of research, but I need to, you to fill in the gaps. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, no, it's a great question. And, um, it's been a super amazing journey and I'm thankful for, for all of it. And I have to preface with that because if it wasn't for people, I probably wouldn't be sitting in this seat mm. having this conversation. And sure. so, um, I'm really thankful for, the journey. And, um, I'm also so excited for the day that the season ends. It's like, I'm not married to the idea of being a photographer every day. It's like, yeah. I'm just married to doing what I'm best at. And for that day, cause I'm not promised tomorrow. So yeah. I'm super thankful for the journey so far. And, um, and just really glad to have had all these amazing moments and stories to share about my photo journey and getting started was really unique. Um, and cause Instagram kind of just popped on the scene and, um, I was kind of like on that early wave. I'm not going to say I was an adopter of Instagram because uh, it's not my platform. I don't own it. Um, and it's, but I was on it really, really early right. and was just taking photos on my iPhone. Um, probably like iPhone three or four at that time, <laughs> yeah. you know, and it's like, you just <clears throat> running around the state of Washington, just taking photos on my phone. Yeah. And, um, and the only place that in the Avenue that I even had to really share those things was Instagram. And even in that kind of time frame, I was still like posting a lot of like life still, cause it was just like still a social media platform. Sure. And, um, and, uh, so I was just hanging out with friends and all that kind of stuff. And I had a buddy of mine that he got like, uh, 1200, 1200 followers or something like that. And I'm like, dude, you don't even know 1200 people. <laughs> like, you're from freaking Puyallup, Washington. Yeah. Like how in the world, like this makes no sense. And so I started like gravitating towards all these trends on Instagram because I was like, you know, if if my friend has more clout than me, like, yo, this is a battle. Like, yeah. He's a lifelong best friend. So I'm like, it's immediate challenge. He's yeah. like almost like a brother. Mm -hmm. Like we have to love each other. Like we don't have a choice. Yeah. Um, it's like that kind of relationship. It's the best. Um, and so we were just, uh, just chomping around Washington, just grabbing some awesome photos because it's so beautiful here. And yeah. uh, the great outdoors here is just an easy avenue to just, I wasn't doing a lot of the work. Like I was just showing up to a beautiful place, yeah. snapping a photo on my phone yeah. and then I would edit it on Visco and then I would post it. And then, um, people were really starting to gravitate towards it. But in that, like I really started to fall in love with photography mm. and, um, started learning simple compositions, started learning how to build an aesthetic and starting to learn, um, a lot of like the old rhythms of Instagram. Meanwhile, I was still like connecting with people from all over the world. Right. And I was like, this is crazy. Like Instagram is allowing me to feel like I'm in a living room um, with so many people that have a like mind, that have a passion for just exploring and grabbing uh, hashtag product, uh, project photos, like people jumping in the middle of a frame and hashtag and jumpstagram or hanging off something and calling it hangstagram or mm. whatever it might be in these like early wave and tears of like rhythms of of Instagram. And, um, I ended up started growing a little bit on my page, got up to like 4,500 followers and then Instagram followed me. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're probably familiar with the whole suggested user list. Yeah. Um, but at the time, like if Instagram followed you, you go on the suggested user list. So people joining the platform could then have a list of people that they best believe represented their app. Yeah. And so like a matter of two weeks, you'd go up like 
20 plus thousand followers then right. um, before it went like off the rails and you're like, what is happening to these people that are suggested? Like, I don't even know if I want to be on that list. Right, um, right. And it was still like, a, it, it was all like real people. And it was, it was before like all the crazy bots started jumping on the platform and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. um, so I went from like 4,500 to like 28,000 and I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like, what do I do? Yeah. Like, I don't, I, don't, I'm not, I don't even own a camera. Like I'm still on my iPhone. Like I'm not like a photographer by any means at this point. Yeah. Um, and I would just say I was a photo guy yeah. and just someone that knew how to like, just be in the mountains. Well, mm. um, like I, I didn't, I didn't have like a purpose behind it yet. And, right. um, and then literally two weeks later or something like that, I was on a Buzzfeed article. Um, and it was 16 Instagrammers that make you want to grow a beard and move to the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> Benj, Benj was also on that. that um, awesome. And it was just, it's really fun. Cause like, I, I would never tell you that I was a photographer then. Mm. And I was just someone that really enjoyed the community aspect. I love being around people. So like Insta meets were my favorite thing in the world. Sure. Um, Cause I'm meeting so many people in one place at one time. And it was just really a great headspace for me. Like I loved the community aspect yeah. and um, things really started to like take off. Like the Buzzfeed article, it connected me uh, to my wife. I already hadn't known her from previous uh, life. Um, she actually dated Benj's younger brother, Alex. Um, <laughs> and is it's, it's hilarious, but they dated for like six months That's awesome. um, and they both went off to college. Then like Karen went off to college to go play volleyball at Southern Oregon University. And then after she graduated, she went over to Thailand to go visit her parents. Mm. Um, she's not Thai. Her mom works for the international school over there okay. and, uh, or did work at the international school over there. And so she went to go visit her parents. And at that same time, the article happened. She saw the article, reached out to me on Facebook and that's how we reconnected. Wow. Um, and rest is kind of history. Um, and uh, from there, like, wasn't long after I got suggested again. Mm. And so like in a, such a short window of time, I went from like 4,500 followers to like over 60,000. Yeah. And I was like, I think I might be like a photographer. <laughs> like, I, I don't, like it was like, it was, it was still like that lingering question. And uh, a friend of mine um, approached me and was like, Hey John, like you're really good at this. You need a camera. Can I buy you one? I want to invest into you. Wow. And I was like, uh, I mean, I mean, I'm not going to stop you from, <laughs> from like being generous. Like, I, sure. I don't, I don't want to ever hinder someone from being generous. I think yeah. that one of the best parts of generosity is actually allowing people to give. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's the other side of the coin that a lot of people think that saying no sometimes you're actually stopping someone from giving the chance to give, and mm. um, that gives a lot of people a chance to operate in maybe their gift set and their skills and their abilities or their um, in, in their moments where they have things to be able to give is an important thing. And so to give people that opportunity is special. And I had to learn that way later on in life. Um, when a friend of mine was telling me that I was robbing him of an opportunity to give. Mm. And, um, and so, uh, my buddy Brandon bought me a 5d classic. Um, Sick. and, um, I went out and bought a 51 four. Um, and I kind of used that. Um, and then, Soon after I booked 18 weddings, no idea how, um, I had like a couple of, I had like a couple of things that happened. Um, even like my first commercial campaign, I shot on my phone. Wow. Um, and it, it was for like an Instagram, uh, thing and, uh, it was for the Sounders FC, mm. um, which is the MLS team here in Seattle. Yeah. And, um, it was like an Instagram campaign thing, just doing ad space stuff and I had to shoot on my iPhone. I didn't really own a camera and anything I had done even around that point is off borrowed gear. So yeah the first proposal I ever shot, which was a crazy experience. And I'm still really great friends with, uh, um, with Andrew today. Um, but that proposal, I borrowed my friend, Philip Leclerc's gear. Mm. And I walked up to this mountain and shot this proposal of two people I'd never met before really. And they're from Nashville and wow. he wanted to propose in, uh, in Washington. Mm -hmm. And I shot it, it ended up going viral on Tumblr and Pinterest. And I'm like, what the heck? Like, I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know what I was doing. I just put on 24 cause you can't miss on a 24 to 70. Yeah. Um, and it's just a miracle, miracle lens. Um, and it was just literally just blind shooting. Just like, yeah, this is great. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> um, and, uh, it just took off. And from there it's like 18 weddings started shooting commercial campaigns for God knows who it was insane. And, 
then uh, the wedding industry never stopped. Been shooting 30 weddings a year since. Wow. Um, and literally just rolling, like rolling my sleeves up and going. Yeah. Like there was no like, the process of learning was doing. Um, and luckily I had a lot of great friends that were in the industry, like one being Benj and then getting to meet a lot of the other creative community through Instagram. Sure. Um, there was a lot of resources and inspiration, I would say more so at my disposal. And like learning a camera was like unique for me. It was like, I just went out in every economy of light and just figured it out. It wasn't uh, taking a course or taking a class. It was just going outside when it's 12 o'clock noon in the middle of August in Washington and the sun is straight up in the sky and you have to figure out how to balance out an image. Yeah. Like you just, it makes you work and it makes you think about it and put the, puts all the, the settings together so that you can navigate it and do it well and be uh, be a professional. And so I, I was navigating all those things. Meanwhile, still booking out like crazy. And, yeah. um, and I've had a lot of great friends that have been so amazing in the process of teaching me amazing things. Uh, one of them being like Tanner Wendell Stewart. I don't know if you have ever heard of him. Mm -hmm. Um, but he's so prolific at taking a photo. It's annoying. Like he's <laughs> so good. He's so gifted, but he ended up being my roommate for two and a half years. And there's wow. so much that I learned from his perfectionism um, of being a photographer. Uh, and there's so much he also learned from me on the business side of things. Cause we bounced each other out in such a big way. Cause he was like the hardcore artist. And I'm like, I understand business and this whole artist thing is new yeah. and it's weird. And I, I, I don't, I don't relate to so many artists things. Right. Um, and it's cause I'm the farthest thing, uh, from an introvert and I don't process inwardly at all about my work. I process everything outwardly mm. and, um, and it makes it really hard sometimes to be a creative. I just want to go out and just do the next business thing. Mm. Um, and so I've always learned a lot from Tanner. Um, and I've also learned so much from other friends as well, but it's been such a fun creative process. Um, have had the chance to be in rooms with people. I never thought I'd ever have the chance to be in rooms with, um, and have had the chance to shoot weddings and be a part of people's day and celebrate them with my camera. And, um, and so many other moments that I got the chance to be a part of all because of a camera. And it's crazy to think that that was the vessel to be able to do that. Yeah. And, um, just, it was honestly just me just trying to be obedient to what was right in front of me. And totally. like in, in my, in the way that I look at it is like God kept opening doors and I kept sprinting through them. Yeah. Um, and it was just like, I was just trying to hang on for dear life if, and it still feels like that in yeah. some ways. Um, so that's uh, there. I don't know if you have any questions about any <laughs> of those aspects of my journey at all, but like, that's a uh, pretty quick uh, version of it. Cause I know that you probably have more questions to ask and things like that, but it's um, yeah, it's been fun, man. It's been such a, such an amazing journey and so thankful for all the moments and blessings that are, have been sprinkled throughout it all. But um, it's been fun, man. That's cool. Well, that's it. Uh, thanks everybody for listening. No, I was kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like there, there you have it. That's, that's, what, that's, what I get. Yeah. that's awesome. That's cool. You know, it's kind of crazy. Like, um, you know, I talked to a lot of photographers and, you know, how they got their start was, you know, their grandpa had a camera at Thanksgiving or, you know, like uh, photography was the thought. Whereas, like, you know, I think when a lot of us started with our had our iPhones, nobody thought of themselves as a photographer, you know, right? Like, and yeah. I think if you did, yeah. you were like, you know, there was like an ego thing to it, you know, at some level. And you're like, ah, oh. but then again, as it like developed, you're kind of like. I'm doing the same stuff. I just have a different tool, you know, eventually. Right. And it's kind of that weird balance. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's cool. I have a bunch of friends, uh, here in DC and a few who have been on the podcast who were in the Instagram suggested, uh, and it just like it just popped it up. And, uh, it's crazy. Yeah. And I think too, like having people can look at that stuff and, um, you know, be like, Oh man, you know, how did you get all these followers? Blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. But the reality is like, they went to your profile, like you got first dibs, if you will, on their eyes, but they still had to click follow, you know? And I think it's, uh, you gotta like the work, you gotta keep liking the work, you gotta keep liking this person who you're following. Um, Cause it's not like you've stopped putting out work, you know, since then. Um, and it's obvious that like, it's good, you know, and people, your audience enjoys it, you know? I think that's cool. And like, you've been, like you said, like stewarding what you've been given. So you're just like, all right, let me go. And um, we say it in different ways, but uh, I always talk about like, I'm ready for this ride to be over. I always say like, I'm waiting for the shoe to drop and be like, okay, that time when I was a photographer was really cool. And, uh, 
totally. if that ends, you know, cool. I feel like I had a, I was in a band that had a, a number one single and we toured on it and then our songs were not that good after it'd be like, okay, cool. Like, like what a fun story. Right. Um, I think that's worth it. Well, that's amazing. By the way, that's incredible. <laughs> that's what I think, I think it would feel like, you know, it's like, okay, bye. Like I talk to a lot of photographers who are, uh, you know, I think I'm a little bit older than you, but I, I talked to photographers in the thirties and forties and I'm just like, are you going to be a wedding photographer forever? And some are like hell bent on yes. You know, like till I'm 65. Totally. And then other people I'm like, I don't, Either your back, your knees, or your jokes are going to give out by by that time, you know. And uh, you know, <laughs> we'll see. You know, I, I think wedding photography, at, yeah. at least at the pace that you and I do, you know, thirty weddings a year or, or bigger. With all the schedules this year, we have an insane number of weddings, which I would never would wish on anybody. But it's like, uh, I would not want to have that pace, you know, when we get older. So, <laughs> you know, I'd be fine if the ride stopped. It'd be kind of funny though if you open up a, a coffee shop eventually and then you go back to being a barista well i it's it's actually in my like foreseeable future i've been actually writing together a business plan yeah. and putting together everything i've already built a website for it nice. and i've already uh, grabbed all the social that i need for it and um things like that a lot of that was just to get named sure just in case yeah like that. but it's yeah and so I, i'm looking to do it in the area that i live too so it's um it's definitely in the foreseeable future. Uh, it's never, it's always, it's always been something that's been on my radar, but I don't think it's going to take me away from still being a photographer. It's like, yeah. there's some things that I'm just like, um, I like God has given me this gift and I think that I'm going to keep sharing it until he asks me to do a different part of sure. the gifts that he's given me. And so it's, um, that's why I'm so okay if I'm not a photographer tomorrow yeah. and it's, um, and it's always such an interesting conversation when you're in a room, like, especially like a clubhouse or whatever it might be, um, you're in a room with photographers and yeah. you say that and they're like, what? Yeah. They're like, like so appalled that you would even consider like saying those words. And I'm like, well, think about it. I go, there's still so many great things that you're gifted at and that you do. And those can be utilized and also taken advantage of mm. in so many other circumstances. And if there's a season where that has to be the emphasis in your journey and in your life, why, like, why would I be foolish and keep the camera in my hand when it's maybe not what's working for now? Yeah. And, and, I, and I'm not saying that that's where I'm at. It's like, I'm still very thankful to be booked and to still have opportunity to make money doing, uh, doing the whole photography thing, sure. but it's, I'm like, so, okay. If tomorrow rolls around and it's like, Oh yeah, here's an opportunity to go do this, or here's an opportunity to go do this, and I'm like, ah, why not? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like if that's what makes most sense, and um, it's also a bigger picture too. It's like I have a family, so it's when I think about it that way too. It's like, why would I be so married to something that it's going to interrupt life? Yeah, and I don't want to ever be stuck to something like that. It's like I'm not like it's not my mission to just be so stubborn that I have to do this every single day. Yeah. If I don't do this, it's like, no, I think at the end of the day, if I'm me and I'm serving my purpose, um, that God has given me, then I think that I'm doing it right. Yeah. I think that I'm doing what's best for me and also my family. Yeah. Um, but I just think that being so like closed in on it necessarily isn't the most healthy thing for sure. I think, any individual. It's like, yeah football player plays for three years yeah. and he's not injured, but he's like, you know what? I just don't see this as forever. Yeah. Retires yeah. goes and does what he really loves to do. It's like, that's a smart thing. It's yeah. like, even though it's amazing to just go hit people for a living, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it's, but I think that goes for so many different things is I'm um, just being available to what's next. Yeah. Um, and not closing the door to it mm. because we're so stubborn in what we are doing now. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a, that was going to be my exact, exact example was like, you know, obviously we look at somebody you know and i'm biased we talked about this pre-show but look at somebody like tom brady and you're like all right seven super bowls like that dude is doing the opposite of what we just talked about but like if somebody yeah if somebody played in the nfl or won one super bowl right you know or like you get to this point i think a lot of people who look up to you and, and maybe even me you know which is hard to say but i think there are people listening that um they're just hoping to get to 10 weddings a year you know right. 20 weddings a year um you know, I, uh, somebody I'm really close with, he's 
He's waiting. And I always joke with him. I'm like, bro, I'll give you a free mentor session, but he never takes me up on it. Uh, he's never gotten to 25 weddings a year. And I'm like, and it's it's at that point, John, where I'm like, I know exactly why you haven't hit it. Because he's a good photographer. Yeah. Uh, so I'm like, bro, yeah. you just got to tweak one screw, man. And, uh, but, yeah. you know, uh, we'll just let it happen. But, you know, I think, um, whereas you get to us and, you know, you shoot 30 weddings a year, you start, you hit your hundred weddings, you're like, whoa, a hundred weddings, what the frick, you know, or, or, or more than that. And, you know, and then like some of our heroes have shot 500 weddings or whatever. And it's like, uh, you know, you really like, you have to figure out what, uh, you know, I, I can see why their perspective is like that we wouldn't stop, you know, but the idea is like, eventually I found, you know, like, yeah, I'm getting into education a little bit, but I went at it through a totally different way. Like I started the podcast first, you know, like three years ago. Uh, nobody, yeah. nobody was listening. I didn't launch a course, didn't do a workshop, didn't do a PDF, didn't do anything, didn't have an email signed up, nothing. Um, and only now, three years later, am I like slowly going to say, all right, let me follow where this leads and like release content, you know, whether it's Patreon or YouTube or whatever. Um, and try and you know make some money off of it but like affect people in a more personable different way and um but like weddings are still the main thing for me right now but i could see that shifting you know like the venn diagram and like changing over kind of deal um over time and i think like if i wasn't thinking that way like you know better for us to think about it than be surprised you know <laughs> or like totally um, yeah, yeah, yeah or think the next door is going to be open when you want to run through it and it's closed and you go oh crap okay um you know i'm trying to figure life out and so it's like you know not planning for the worst by any means like we're not trying to invent the parachute because we, we you know don't like the airplane but it's like uh you know planning for your future is important you know and, and and being open like you said and just being like again it's a privilege that we get to do this so <laughs> you know totally yeah totally what's uh what's the number one question you get in your dms i'm just kind of curious <laughs> annoying or not what's the most the number one thing I'm going to be super honest, um, with that. It's, um, someone asking for me to get them in contact with NF. Who's that? NF. He's a, he's a rapper. Oh. Um, and <laughs> I feel so I've, old. I didn't uh, know. <laughs> and yeah, and he's, he's a great friend and, yeah. um, and he still follows me on Instagram. And so because of that, like his followers, he has like a cultish fan base and they're amazing. And yeah. they've been, um, they've been honoring his music for since he kind of got going and like, it's wild. You go to a show, like there's people from 12 years old, all the way up to 65 that are singing every lyric wow. and he's a rapper. So it's like the demographic too is like amazing. And He's also just so gifted. Like he's so phenomenal at what he does. And, and he's been, it's crazy how it all came together to be a part of his creative process in some way. I've shot a couple album covers for him and, mm. um, and I've been super blessed with those chances and opportunities and super thankful that he would even want to include me. Um, and it was all because of his now wife. Um, and I used to shoot fitness photos for her way back in the day. And okay. then that relationship kind of spurred into uh, what it is now. Yeah. And just super thankful for them. It's so fun to watch his music just take off the way that it has. Yeah. Um, and his followers and his fan base just don't leave my DMS. <laughs> they message me <laughs> every day. Um, I, every day I get a new message from, wow. um, from one of his, uh, one of his fan clubs. Mm. So, um, which is amazing. And I love it, but I just don't respond to him. Yeah. Um, so if anyone's listening to this, that will listen to this, <laughs> that is part of his, uh, fan club. Um, it is very rare that I will ever respond to a DM in regards to it. And in, in the idea of res respecting the relationship that I have, yeah. Yeah. um, with Nate. So, yeah. um, but so that's, that's honestly, the other thing is, um, Hey, can I get a shout out? That's the other <laughs> thing that I get is, um, I don't know why people think that getting a shout out on my page is going to change any of their trajectory. Mm, yeah. Um, but, uh, there went my life. Yeah, Sorry. That's all good. Um, so I'm going to see if I can turn it back on no, that's all good. while I'm talking. Um, and so it's, uh, it's definitely a unique, <laughs> unique thing. Instagram is such a, um, I don't know, man, it's just Instagram. Yeah. Um, 
it's it's hilarious what a monopoly currency can do to people's mind mm-hmm. um and yeah. it's uh like this clout chasing kind of thing is hilarious to me yeah um cuz to me it doesn't really serve the purpose for everyone's life yeah. the way that people think that it would yeah. um and so that's a lot of it is like shout outs um or that's so funny um yeah just people wanting me to follow them or whatever it's hilarious <laughs> well i'm um, glad you answered my yeah, dm <laughs> yeah i so i vet like if um so i have it set to where like people that i follow um it goes into like my my main dms like right away yeah. and i can see it sure um and then everything else goes into requests yeah, same. which is has been a godsend yeah. um having requests because then i can just like scroll through it and just see if, yeah um it even works especially since clubhouse it's been nuts mm. like the amount of dms that have been coming through have been crazy That's cool. so um but uh yeah so i that vetting thing has been great so with that though if i see like a normal like <laughs> normal person face yeah. and it's like not someone trying to beg um <laughs> then it's um to say it bluntly it's yeah. just the truth and anyone anyone that's been in a seat like mine would agree with me yep. probably right off the bat right. um so it's uh so getting dms like from from you they're like hey you want to come on the podcast i'm like yeah dude let's do this talk <laughs> i'm in um so i love talking um, so yeah i'm in <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. so that's probably the most <laughs> asked thing on DMs for sure. That's funny. I wonder. Uh, we'll have to convince Benj because Benj is just uh, he's 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 too famous for us now. He's got his YouTube channel and everything. Uh, but oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> but we got to convince him <laughs> to come on and uh, we could do like uh, social media horror stories of just like weird DMs you guys have gotten or something. Or here, let me Facetime him right now. <laughs> let me see if he'll. <laughs> FaceTime Benj Heish. I love it. I love it. We're doing this live. My let's see. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. I'm leaving all let's this see in. If he actually answers. I'm all in. Yeah, that'd be great. Tell your editor. You know? Yeah, Alex is ready. This is going to yeah. be the clip, probably. Let Let's see if he answers. He might be hanging out with his his kids. Yeah. Oh, he's going to answer. Benj. Yo. Hey, I'm on the bearded tog <laughs> right now. I did not make and... him do this. <laughs> He, oh my gosh. he 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 didn't make me do mid this. Podcast. Yeah, mid podcast. Um, just living the dream over here. What do you? What do you? Is that protein powder? No, it's multi multivitamins. Oh, multivitamins. Yeah. Great, I love it. Um, try to be a responsible adult. Uh, uh, Take care of those knees. <laughs> Hi, Maddie. Um, uh, no, we, he he was asking if we could all get on a podcast and talk about what again? Social media. Yeah, uh, social media horror stories. Social media horror stories. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah. yeah. He, he's in. We got him. <laughs> Are we doing this right now? No, no. Uh, no, no, no. We're going to do it another time. I love it. Another time. Like, okay. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Good. Perfect. Hey, it's great to see your face. I played golf with your brother yesterday. Nice. Yeah. yeah you're playing golf all the time. Yeah. 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 Got to do it. That's pretty neat. Because they shut down our gyms. So um, it's the only thing I can do. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Pandemic life. But I'm going to let you go probably because I should continue doing this podcast. But love you a long time. Nice. Yeah, job. Bye. Bye. I love it so much. That's hilarious. Uh, well, now we have something to look forward to. No, it's kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, it's good. That's so f- it's healthy. We needed it. Yeah. No, I love that. That's like a that's a very uh, Bob Goff move. Be like, let's just FaceTime him right now. Let's just do it. You know. That's I. I like so part of my personality is if I think about someone, I just text them right away. Yeah, totally. So it's like if I like it's that's like a huge part of my world is just always trying to connect with people as much as I can. So when you're like, let's talk to Benj, I'm like, ah, let's talk to him I now. It. Like it's um I love that he answered though. Yeah. I I love that he was also eating multivitamins at the same time. It's <laughs> kind of fantastic. You like can't you like can't that's like raw content. You like can't make that that's up. That's true. It's pretty amazing. That's true. That's the power of a uh, might- connection right there though. You know, it's like we all, especially after last year, we all want to connect. I'd probably answer more FaceTimes now than I would two years ago, right? I love that. Right. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't we? Everyone needs more FaceTimes in their life. <laughs> yeah. Are you one of those people uh, in the millennial world where please don't call me? Are you like, no, I'm going the opposite way. I'll FaceTime you for everything. Oh, 100 <laughs> percent. I'm I'm always, always FaceTiming. Got to. I love it. There's um, 
that's also in today's like world it's you meet so many people that live in different cities now yeah. and um you can't always just drive to denver you know yeah. when you live in seattle so it's because of that it's like all um one of my close friends um lives in colorado springs he works for an organization called one child mm-hmm. And we talk all the time. He's actually flying in at 6 p.m. today and I'm going to go pick him up from the airport nice. and, um, and things like that. But it's like, I just FaceTime all the time because um, like he's a huge add to my life and super thankful for his friendship. And mm. I do the same thing to my lifelong best friends that I have down in LA and um, do it to one of my best friends that lives in New York and all that kind of stuff. But it's like, the, like it's such a great tool to like keep you connected. And sometimes it drives my friends nuts that I only FaceTime them. Like I don't text them. I don't call them. <laughs> I only FaceTime them. Um, but it's just such a great like way to connect. Cause I, like, I want to see your face. Mm. Like I want to actually like have face to face interaction. It's like, even with my friends in Canada, it's like, yeah. I can't actually call you cause it's too expensive. And so I'm going to FaceTime you. Yeah. Um, and cause that's free that's cause true. it's on a Wi Um, that is true. and so um, it's a huge like added bonus to uh, friendships that are in areas that are not close to you. So like all my friends in Canada, like Scott and Paul and all them, it's like, I just, I want to connect with them all the time. Cause I love them. Mm. And, um, FaceTime allows me to do that on the pre on the reg. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's pretty nice. For sure. For sure. I mean, now you can, uh, you can FaceTime over Instagram now. Like there's like video chat in the DMS. Uh, yeah. Can't you do like four? Well, now? That's live. So you can go live with four people. Oh, that's live. Uh, but even in the DMs yeah. now, it's like they, they built their own version of FaceTime. It's kind of insane. It's it's cool, but it's also bloated. You're like, we nobody asked for that. Nobody was looking for FaceTime inside of yeah, Instagram. It's a little, it's a little yeah, much. It's like an yeah. exhibit being like, I made your Instagram FaceTime so you can FaceTime with your Instagram. And you're like, what? Why, why are you doing that? Yeah. Um, I love it. What are the, When it comes to shooting, let's talk photography for a little bit, you know, and you, sh- and yeah. again, you shoot so much stuff um, that is like, you know, of varying different things, you know, but I think uh, it's all really, really good. And so what are you, what are you generally, you know, hoping to get when you're shooting, you know, or what are, what are some things you kind of mentioned Tanner's perspective, but like, what's something that you really love in an image? You know, is that like a, how it feels? Is that a technical thing? Do you like for me, if the bokeh looks kind of weird and crazy, I'm not going to lie. If the photo kind of sucks, but the bokeh looks cool, I'm happy. You know, like what's a, what is, is that why you have the, is that why you have the lights on behind you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> like, li- That's listen, amazing. John, I wish this was shallower. I wish I could be like, you know, even crazier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just be like, how can I get it there? Um, but yeah, what are oh, you, what are you man. thinking about or looking for when it comes to, to shooting, you know, all that stuff because you shoot so many different things. Is it, uh, the same feeling for all of them or is it different? What's that look like? Yeah. I, well, I think, um, each setting kind of sits to its own. Mm. Right. And like, I can't change that. Yeah. It's like when I show up to a wedding day, um, and what's presented in front of me is what it is. Like I can't dictate or change that. Right. Like that, at least that's like my philosophy in shooting. It's like some people are wizards with Photoshop and they want to spend 20 hours a day just, manipulating images right. and I can't do that. Like my brain doesn't think that way. And my brain tries to think um, like, how can I make this mundane perspective look beautiful? Mm. Um, and it's just like that everyday shooting kind of vibe. And that's a lot of how I shoot anyways. Um, but it's also way different when I show up to a wedding and then when I show up onto a set to shoot an album cover, right? you know what I mean? It's like, it's completely different worlds and to be able to be versatile in that is like, honestly, just being, um, I've kind of always put it this way is just letting my camera make me available. Yeah. And, and that's my style is like, I'm just available. It's mm. um, like the editing and all that kind of stuff. Like we can work that out. It's like, if you want a certain coloring, if you want a certain feel vibe or aesthetic, like that's easy, like let's work it out yeah. and um, see what speaks to you the most. But I mean, for me personally, what I really love is trying to make this timeless uh, stamp in time. And it's like, which is obviously every time you click the shutter down, um, is you're freezing a moment. But in that, like when I process and I go through my images, I want it to feel like it's something that existed 20 years ago, but it also feels like it's something that exists 20 years from now. Mm. And so like when you look at the image, it's something that transcends time versus something that just sits in, in a, uh, in a trend sure. or in a, a certain dispensation or things like that. It's like, I don't want to be too niched that someone thinks that I'm from a different era. And then I don't want to be so far stuck that I'm trying to always chase what the future could be. 
um, yeah. versus letting the moment live for what it is and then trying to find a way uh, to make it transcend time, um, both backwards and forward. Um, and doing that in digital format is really unique. Yeah. Um, and because uh, a lot of people would say, you should just shoot film. Um, I'm like, yeah, I probably could, but I don't want the bill. Um, <laughs> and it's in the workflow. I'm like, it's oh, different. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so much different. And so, um, but I'm, I'm always okay to those things. It's like, I'm so pumped for whatever facet could look like for me yeah. in terms of how I shoot and, and things like that to change. And, um, like my editing style throughout the years has changed so much. Um, and like right now I'm in a season where that's kind of my approach is like, how can I make this last forever, mm. but then also make it feel like it's been here forever. Yeah. And trying to approach it that way is been a healthy brain space for me um and how i compose an image and how i see things and um i've always been super inspired by movies mm. um and like the cinematic approach and how movement is there and how um perspective is seen and how it incorporates feeling and emotion and all that kind of stuff has been super inspiring to me so i love seeing framing like uh Every time I watch a Christopher Nolan film, yeah. the DP that he hires yeah, Wally just Fisher. outdoes himself. Yeah. yeah, he outdoes himself every single time. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know how you get better yeah. than what you've previously done because it's insane. Like the, the opening scene to Dunkirk gets me every time. Yeah. Every time I watch it, I'm like, how in the world? Like that's freaking goals. <laughs> like it's so good. Yeah. Um, so I'm really inspired by cinema. Um, I think it's beautiful. Um, and so I try to have that approach too is like to make people feel like they're in the photo mm. um, versus trying to place them in a photo. It's like, I want to feel like, I want to feel them in the photo um, and feel like I'm really capturing who they are. Um, and so that's a big part of my process as well. Yeah. Even in like the wedding world is I tell people, I'm like, Hey, how you show up on the wedding day is what I document. Mm. That's it. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make you George Clooney dude. And I'm not going to make you feel like you're JLo yeah. lady. So it's like, um, it's, it's not how it is for me. So, um, but that's a big part of my process too, is like, uh, how can I create and cultivate the human experience, mm. um, versus for something that's not there. John, my last question for you of the day is, uh, what's your favorite chance, the rapper song, favorite chance, the rapper song. Um, Wow. He has a lot of good ones. Um, I, I will just say this. The coloring book is probably in probably one of my top 10 favorite records of all time. Right. So the coloring book is unreal. I have it on vinyl. Mm. And so I listen to it all the time. Um, but a lot of what also gets missed with chance is the Donnie trumpet uh, music experience record. Okay. Cause he, he does a lot mm. of everything with that. And so um, like Sunday candy is unreal. Okay. Um, and that song is phenomenal. Um, but uh, probably on his newest record, uh, hot shower. Okay. Yeah. Um, Super good song. That song, that song is a slap. <laughs> it is, it is so good. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I would, you know, probably, yeah, there's a lot of them though. Like, it's it's all so good. Like, how do you <laughs> pick a favorite? Yeah. Um, I I just think he's an absolutely brilliant artist, and so anything that he puts together is incredible. Love it, dude. Which one's your favorite? Uh, off coloring book, probably no problem. You know, like yeah, that song, just song gets me. That whole record is hype, but uh that song will get me like you'll see happy adam like a guy who toured in a metal band you'll see me like happy and like let's go you know um that's amazing yeah, so i love it uh well dude um where can people go to find out more about you can people you know i'm gonna tell people to slide in your dms and see if see if you answer yeah <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i uh, i mean my phone number is on my instagram <laughs> i didn't um, even realize that that's and funny. yeah and I, I have no problem like answering calls or texts or anything like that. But I mean, if you're trying to like reach out to work with yeah, me, then that makes sense. I would just say like, go to my email because <laughs> uh, for work, I, I don't, I don't like try to 
Um, it's great to text and it's great to do like DMs and all that kind of stuff. But for work, yeah. email is just a great spot to have everything. Sure. Um, but I mean, I'm a really reasonable guy. Like you can just contact me through my Venmo if you want. <laughs> um, and I'm just, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm super easy going. You can reach through, through my website, John Taylor suite.com, uh, at John Taylor suite on Instagram. Um, and I have a TikTok. Don't touch it though. It's not even downloaded on my phone. So please don't even try yeah. to reach out to me on there. Um, same with Snapchat, not there. Don't send me selfies. I don't want to see them. Um, and if you do just send it through Instagram. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, I'm pretty easy going though. I'm not like, I'm not pretty, I'm not like a stickler on it by any means. I love means. it. I love it. So, dude, well, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I love TikTok, but yeah, I lost my login. Like, I, and I have like the password, but I did the, uh, the login with Apple. I tried it and then I forgot like the official thing and then it, it all messed up. So I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm never coming back, you know, until I can figure that out. So, yeah, I love it. Well, <laughs> I love well, dude, it. Thank you so much for, I would also say Clubhouse though. I think that if anyone wants to jump into a conversation, like, let's have one on yeah. Clubhouse. Let's hang. Hey, let's so. do it. I need a, I need some people to hang out with on Clubhouse because I'm. It's like, I I like talking. We're here, you know. I'd rather talk than. Uh, whereas like the listening, seldom do I see something that I want to talk about or want to listen to, you know. Which which sounds yeah. like a, a mean yeah, thing, yeah. but it's not. It's like we all of us have to like have a Clubhouse title or a podcast title that's like, hey, here's what you want to hear, and I'm like, yeah, I don't want to listen to that, but I will talk about it, you know. Um, Unless it's totally. crypto, then I will gladly listen to it. So, <laughs> <laughs> or an NFT conversation. Dude, My God. That's a whole other, whole other thing. But, dude, so nice to meet you. Uh, and thanks for coming on, man. I'll send you this when it comes out. It's gonna be awesome. I love it. I can't wait. And thanks again for having me on. And hopefully we can do this again soon. Guys, thank you so much for checking out the Bearded Hog. It really means a lot. If you can, leave a like on the video. If you want to see more videos, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications on when new videos come out immediately. Have a wonderful day, guys, and keep being awesome.